What's going on, Quest Teens? God bless you guys. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. We made it. It sounds crazy to say it, you know. For the next week, you're going to still be writing 2023 on your homework assignments and everything that's due. But remember, we made it to 2024. And I'm so glad you've tuned in to join us. Uh, and one of my prayers is that we're consistent and you guys listening are consistent this year and listening to our devotionals uh, so we can just grow in scripture and in the things of God. And uh, with that being said, let's jump right into this incredible series that we got for the uh, month of January that we're kicking off titled Beneath the Surface. Beneath the Surface. And it's pretty much what it exactly sounds like. You know, we're going to try to go a little bit deeper uh, into the word of God and, and deeper within ourselves and who we really are inside and who you are inside because, you know, to be at, at a younger age, you're still trying to like find yourself and, and who you really are and not only your hobbies and what you do on a daily basis, but even outside of that, who you are as a person, your character, and more importantly, who you strive to be. And my goal and our goal uh, should be to strive to be like Jesus Christ because he was perfect in every single way. I want to title this devotional, God helps us discover who we're becoming. God helps us discover who we're becoming. Because we're at an age and you're at an age now where you're not there yet. You're not done. God's not done with you. Still chiseling you and, and molding you into who you really are in Him and who you're called to be. And I want to start this off with a question. Can you tell what is in someone's heart just by looking at them from the outside? I'm going to phrase it one more time. Can you tell what is in someone's heart just by looking at them from the outside? I'll give you a second to think about that. All right, it's done. Uh, unless you're an Avenger <laughs> or somebody with crazy x-ray spiritual vision, most likely you can't, right? Can't judge somebody really what's inside, what their thoughts are, what's in their heart just by looking at them. It's extremely rare. I mean, maybe you have the gift of discernment when you can kind of figure that out. But I would say that the majority of us, we can't tell. We could just kind of see someone's surface because all of us, when we look at each other, it's a surface. The surface is the top of something, the top portion of something. But what is beneath that is really what matters. That's really what's most important. You see, it takes effort to name what is happening within us. Like the ocean's depths, it can be scary to find out what is below. The truth of who we are that we carry deep inside of us. Sometimes it's scary and, 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 and I remember going through a time of life where I would stiff arm people and kind of give them the little Heisman uh, trophy arm when they would try to get too close or ask too many personal questions, you know? I wouldn't want people to dig deep inside, almost like I had something to hide or I didn't want to, you know, expose certain things about myself. I don't know, I don't know why I was like that and it's something normal that at a young age, I think you don't want people to get too deep within you, you know? But when it comes to God and Christ and the things of, of, the, of, of the Lord and the Bible, it's important because that's what matters because he created us. And the creator knows why he created us. And we have to, as we get closer to him and discover who he is, we start to discover who we are. I want to share a story out of the book of Luke. And it talks about one of the few times in scripture where we see kind of the adolescence, the childhood or, or, or a teen Jesus that we find in the book of uh, Luke, and we don't see that a lot, you know, it kind of jumps from when he was a baby to there's a little bit when he was young, and then it goes right into his adult uh, ministry. But I want to read uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 40 to 52. Luke 2, 40 to 52, and it says this, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. And then it kind of jumps to where it says the boy Jesus at the temple. Verse 41 says, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him sitting in the temple courts, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. 
Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. There's a lot to dissect here. But what you could see is that the original Home Alone is found in the Bible. <laughs> I think that's where they got the script of Home Alone where the parents literally left and uh, they got on a plane and they left uh, the actor Macaulay Coke and they left him at Home Alone and then he took on the bad guys by himself, so on and so forth. That's kind of what happened here to an extent because they literally, Jesus' parents left him at the temple and they didn't realize that he was gone until a day later. I'm like, what could have possibly happened? <laughs> they didn't notice uh, where Jesus was gone. But he was where he needed to be. He was only 12 years old, and he was already discovering who he was and what his purpose was, although he was fully God and fully human. He knew where to go, which is his father's house, which is God's house. And as he got closer to God at that level, he discovered who he was and what his purpose was. See, much like there is growth happening in Jesus as a teenager that we won't see, there is growth happening in us, in us that we often miss or cannot see either. In these few verses, we see how Scripture says Jesus grew. He grew up and he knew where to go. And everybody was astonished, almost like he was the Word, which he was. But he knew where to go. He knew his purpose. What's your purpose? If you don't know, that's okay. If you're trying to discover who you are, I'm here to tell you, and this is a model that, we, we, that, we, that us at Quest Teens live with, and this is the main thing that we want to inject to you, is as you discover Jesus, you discover who you are. Discover Jesus, discover you. Get close to God, and he shows you who you are and what you are inside. See, although he was only 12, Jesus grew in strength and wisdom, diving deep into who God is and starting on his mission. Jesus, sh Jesus shows us that as we get closer to God, who we are and what God desires for our life become more evident. As Jesus did this, he grew in wisdom and stature. It's almost like he knew what he was built. He knew who he was, not just what he did. And that's important. That's key. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. A lot of times we don't want to let, let people in. You know, we're very surfacey with people. We kind of just see a smile and we're like, oh, that person is doing okay. Not knowing that there's probably something going on in there that maybe they may be just masking it with a smile. It's funny because, not funny, but it's, it's interesting. I'm going to give you an interesting, uh, uh, interesting statistic that's going to blow your mind a little bit. According to National Geographic, the ocean covers over 70% of the planet's surface, and more than 80% of the sea has not been explored or mapped out by humans. In some ways, we know more about the moon's surface than the ocean, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty interesting, right? Ocean, the, the waters take up most of the Earth's surface, yet we know very little about it. We only know the surface. We only know the waves. We only know what goes on up here. But there's a lot of in-depth things going on that we don't even have the technology to get down to the bottom of the ocean. And we know more about the moon, possibly, than we do the bottom of the ocean, which is crazy. And it's very telling because a lot of times people know us on a surface level, right? But they don't really know what's within us. And sometimes we don't even know what's within us. And the biblical response is to, as you get closer to God, get closer to His Word, obedient to His Word, get to know who the Creator is, you find out why He created you and what for. The thing with that is that there's no way that any one person could explore all the ocean, all of the oceans, all of the waters by themselves. It would be impossible, right? It would take a community of ocean explorers to discover what is happening in the depths of the water. And the reality is, the same is true with us. God knows that we can't do it alone and we shouldn't have to. God works through our communities, friends, and families to help us discover who we are in Him. You ever heard, of the, you ever heard the saying, it takes an army? That means that it takes a multitude of people to accomplish this one thing. And honestly, to discover who you are as a young person, as you're growing up to who God is molding you to be, it takes a lot of people. It takes friends and leaders and pastors and people that care about you and feed into you and hear you out and give you advice and are molding you and help you and helping you discover who you are. It's impossible for one person to discover the depths of the ocean and it's impossible for one person to discover the depths that's within our heart and within our soul. Man, I remember a time where I defined myself as an MMA fighter. You know, I fought in the, 
in, in mixed martial arts 10 plus years ago. I compiled an undefeated record of six wins and zero losses. I was a two-time champion. I accomplished so much in that world. And I really, I literally walked around telling people, I'm an MMA fighter. I'm, I, this is what I am. This is who I am. I'm a fighter, period. When somebody asks me what I am, I'm an MMA fighter. And long story short, one day to the next, I couldn't do that anymore. Physically, I went through a couple of things that I couldn't fight anymore. And who I thought I was got crushed one day to the next. It was a temporary thing that I thought was eternal. And what I learned the hard way was that MMA was not who I was. It was just something that I did. It wasn't who I was. And once Jesus changed my life, I realized that who I am is his child, who he wants me to be. As I grew closer to him, I started realizing who I really am, which is a child of God. And what I did was everything else. See, you're not just a basketball player. You're not just a cheerleader. You're not just a student, not just a son. You're not just a hobby. That might be something that you, that might be something that you do, but that's not who you are. Who you are is who Jesus called you to be. And as you get closer to him, you discover what that is and who that is. So I want to end with three little points just so we can take with us going into this week and going into this uh, new year. The question is this, when can I talk with God? Why not create some time this week to ask God in prayer about how time with the Holy Spirit makes you more like Jesus? Number two, how can I ask God for help? Ask God how you can reach out to the people around you for help. Maybe you need some accountability or direction. Perhaps you're looking for a solid group to do a Bible study with. Maybe you, maybe you would like to be more consistent in showing up in places where people further along than you and following Jesus can help you. And finally, how can I be honest? Everything we invite God into, God already knows about. This doesn't change the reality that we need to learn to be honest about our weaknesses and need and need God's help. We are all in need of God's grace. So be honest about where you are with God this week. It's okay, we're imperfect. You might be looking at me as how oh, Hector, I'm just not perfect. Well, get in line. <laughs> and you're never gonna be. But you can grow in perfection in Christ. As you get closer to Him, He takes care of everything else. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else will be given to you as well. That's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It's a great verse to start this new year off with. Let me pray with you as you get your week along, uh, get your week going, and get this year going as well. Lord, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you that you've brought us along to 2024. And uh, we didn't have to be here. We didn't have to see 2024, but here we are. And uh, I just pray that we can just grow closer to you. And as we grow closer to you and discover more about you and your word, we discover the purpose that you have for us. You as the creator, Lord, you know best. You know why we created us. And you know the use, what we're useful for and what you want us to do. I pray for all those listening that may be struggling to discover who they are and their identity. And I pray that you could just give them a little bit of patience, Lord, that it's a process, that they're being chiseled into who you want them to be. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week.